Today's Cigar Box Guitar Lesson, Blues Soloing and Blues Improvising. So I've made a recording for this lesson. It's a recording of the 12 bar blues that we learned last time and it just repeats itself over and over again. And the reason I did it is to give you an opportunity to put that on and just improvise a solo over it. If you're thinking, a blues solo, that's a bit out of my league or I don't know what to do, don't worry about it. It's not about knowing what to do ahead of time. All you're going to need to do is randomly, at first, come up with patterns in the minor scale that we learned way back when. If you don't remember the minor scale, go back and refresh that first because all you're going to be doing is just playing around, making stuff up off the top of your head, not thinking about it paying attention to how things sound and how things feel with the music. I'll give you a little demonstration. <laughs> plan any of that and it wasn't breathtakingly brilliant but the point of this whole exercise is getting really comfortable just playing just playing around on that minor scale the minor scale sounds bluesiest because it has that flat in third and you can that's where that bluesy smoky gritty quality is going to come from and so as this recording is playing, it gives you a really good opportunity to just tinker around and have fun, not pre-plan, not have to hit exactly the right note at the right time, and experiment. In doing so, you're going to get really comfortable using the minor scale, and that is what's going to give you the power to do your own blues improv. So the only thing I was actually doing is bouncing around fairly arbitrarily around on the different notes of the minor scale and I was mixing it up sometimes playing two strings at a time sometimes the top two strings sometimes the bottom two strings sometimes only playing one string at a time sometimes making it really slidey sometimes making it more distinct on the notes sometimes putting in a lot of vibrato and holding it on one note sometimes just sliding right around just patterns just making patterns and shapes and lines based on what I'm hearing in the track reacting to what I'm hearing and paying attention to what that sounds like paying attention to what that feels like and just letting it be a very organic intuitive responsive sort of process and anyone can do that it might not sound breathtakingly good at your first try and that's why I made the track 12 minutes long which is longer than you probably want to listen to the 12 bar blues looped over and over again but once you get ripping on that once you start doing stuff that sounds good 12 minutes is gonna fly by like that because you're gonna be having fun so give that a try actually sit down and 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 play the blue play some blue solos for a while now the point of this is not just so that you can play along with this CD necessarily even though that's that is very good but the overall goal 
is to turn the CD off and basically try the same thing. Try making those same patterns on the same scale without any accompaniment. <laughs> Exact same idea as the blues soloing exercise. So that's really all you need for these improvs, for this soloing. Um, above all, trust yourself. Trust your ear, and don't worry if things aren't coming out perfectly at first. There's a cool Jimi Hendrix quote that I really, really like. It goes something along the lines of, If you play a wrong note, make it right by what you play after. The whole idea is, well, if you play something that all of a sudden doesn't sound good, don't be like, oh, I'm no good, let's just stop. Just keep your head in the game. Just keep on rolling with it. It doesn't matter. Have fun. Trust your ear. Trust yourself. Trust how it feels. And you'll be grooving it up bluesy style in no time.